Okay, on page 448 with example five, I want to look at, uh, there's one other simplifying technique that I want to talk about. We did this with the opener where we were going to put fractions together. That's a general strategy we want to try to use when we're simplifying. And in this case, if I look at the denominators here, I have one minus sine x and I have cosine x. So therefore, the common denominator is going to be one minus sine x times cosine x. So those two together will be the common denominator. So just to illustrate the process here, we want to put those two fractions together. We're going to get a common denominator. Okay, this one got multiplied by cosine, so I'd have cosine squared on top. Okay, and then on the bottom, this one got multiplied by one minus sine, so on the top I'd have sine x times one minus sine x. And that part would be getting the common denominator and then adjusting the numerators. All right, and then from there. I'm going to go ahead and uh, figure out the top simplified part. I would recognize here that, uh, and keep in mind that especially when you have a minus sign here, I would put the entire second half over here on the top in parentheses. And then when you simplify that, it's going to be sine x minus sine squared x. Okay. And so again, if we subtract that entire quantity, our sentence is going to read on top cosine squared x minus sine x and then plus sine squared x. So that would be the top of the equation. And hopefully we notice uh, something here. Okay, what do we see got going on here with these two? If I rearrange these and put it as cosine squared plus sine squared, isn't that just one? And so on top, don't I have one minus sine x? And on the bottom, I have one minus sine x, cosine x. And since these are both the same, I can cross them out, can I? And with that said, I'd have 1 over cosine x. And finally, I change that to secant. So again, yet another technique that if we do it correctly, if we put the two fractions together and simplify, okay, a lot of stuff cancels out or drops out because of our identities and because we have same quantities on top and bottom. Okay. All right. And then the uh, last one I want to look at, uh, there was one more equation I want to go through with you. So on page 450, and the equation is 2 sine squared x plus sine x equals 1. So if we're going to solve this equation, okay, what I want you to just try to recognize here is that this is really just a quadratic equation in disguise. Okay, this is really of the same form as 2u squared plus u equals 1. True. And so we're going to solve it just like we would solve any quadratic equation. We're going to get everything on the same side. Okay. And we're going to factor. Okay. Hopefully it factors. <laughs> and this one, if we do 2 sine x and sine x, 1 and 1 is our only choice there. And hopefully that builds the middle term. we got a sine x in the middle. If we did 2 sine x, positive, and a negative sine x, those two together, added would give us 1 sine x, so they would factor. And then from there, we we'll use our zero product property to find our solutions. So in this case, I'd wind up with sine x equals 1 half. In this case, I'd wind up with sine x equals negative 1. All right, so from there, we would solve those equations by using inverses or by using the unit circle. These happen to be nice values from the unit circle. So sine x is equal to 1 half at 5 over 6. Okay. Keep in mind they told us to uh, find all the solutions. All right. So where else would sine x equal 1 half? What other quadrant? First and second. So it would be 5 pi over 6. And where does the sine equal negative 1? The sine equals negative 1 at 3 pi over 2. Okay. So all of those... Okay, our solutions to this sentence, uh, we didn't do any dividing here, so we probably won't lose any solutions, so we could check these, but they should all work. I would take the time to do that. I'm not going to take the time to do it right now, but ultimately they should all work. Now, the bigger issue, though, is how do we generalize this? Because that's only three solutions, and this, solu this thing has infinitely many solutions. Okay, so how do we generalize that? Okay, these would be the solutions between 0 and 2 pi. So if they ask for that, we would just give those three. But if we need to generalize it, we'd say pi over 6 plus 2 n pi, for n is an integer, pi pi over 6 plus 2 n pi, for n is an integer, 
and also 3 pi over 2 plus 2 n pi, where n is an integer. So if it asks us for all solutions, okay, we're likely going to have to give a generalization like that, okay, because we're going to get an infinite amount of solutions in an equation like this. Because why? Okay, so how many things could make this equal a half? 5 over 6 can, 5 pi over 6 can, okay, and any pi over 2 from those. True? All right, and once again, <clears throat> bigger picture-wise, this is also something that's checkable. Because couldn't we graph this and graph this and see what the intersection points are? Okay, okay. so for uh, tomorrow, uh, 